Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh. You just imagine what Moses has you know, done this before, done that, done it. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse, now see, you see that conditional there? If thou refuse, God is not hard in his heart. This moment, Pharaoh, you can go ahead and let them go. But if you don't, to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. Okay? This is the goddess Hekikik, whatever, H-E-Q-U-E-T. She's pictured women in childbirth. Uh, her form is a frog. It's related to the flood of the Nile. That brings you back to happy, or happy, whatever her name is. You're going to start seeing these gods run into each other, because in the realms of the Egyptian gods, as the Roman god, there, you know, there's mama, papa god who gives birth to baby god, and baby god grows up and has swimming and all that. So we run the frog god back to the Nile god, and we're still dealing with the water, because here comes the frogs from the water. Now, with this, you'll find HQT, I don't know if that's exactly how you find it in Egypt, but HQT would reside to the egg. So what you have here, ready or not, drum roll please, you would have the Easter egg frog god of Egypt. And it is in reference to a child, to a woman in childbirth. Isn't that interesting? We have come to the Easter egg, we have come to the Easter egg frog, the Easter egg bunny, and they all run back to a woman and her pregnancy and giving children. Nothing new under the sun. This one, this is, you know, a frog, a little more slimy. And, wait a minute. If the princess were to kiss the frog, she would get a prince. Out of the Bible. And the rivers shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thy house. Okay, they're going to rivet, rivet, rivet into your house. And into thy bedchamber, your bed, their bedrooms. And upon their bed. Now, the standard bed today of, you know, of Americans is 25 inches high. You ever see a frog jump onto a... But... These frogs are going in your house, they are going into your bedroom, and they are going on your bed. You're getting no rest. They're slimy. And into the house of thy servants, upon thy people, the Egyptians, onto thy ovens. They're in your kitchen. You open up your oven to, to bake a cake, or, and out comes frog. You go in a cupboard to grab a pan. They're a frog. They're everywhere. They're slimy. Yucky. Upon thy people and in thy ovens. And onto thy kneading troughs. That's where you make the dough. They're everywhere in your house. And the frog shall come up upon. Let me see. Come up both on thee. They're on the people. They're in the beds. They're in the kitchen. And upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. And the Lord, 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, the grandma's house we go. Sorry. So, stretch thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds. There's Hapai again, the god of the Nile. Shows up again. And causes frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters, half high, of Egypt. And the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. They're everywhere. And the, mid, and the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Really? It wasn't enough, but you had to add more? Why couldn't you elim elim eliminate the problem? Why does the world make more problems than they do solving the problem? We got, you know, they keep saying, well, look at this medical age we got. Look how great our health is. All right, take this pill. Well, what's the side effect of this pill? It'll kill you. But you won't have cancer. You will have major uh Injury or harm done to your major organs. That's what I'm trying to say. But you will not have a rash no more. Your knee won't hurt, but your brain will fry. And all the world and all that they do is they just cause more and add more to the problem. So the magicians, here's all these frogs, and they just add more to it. And Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me, so they're in him, about him, around him, and from my people. And I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. I've had it with these frogs. You win. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me. Over who? Who, Moses? Uh, you took the credit there, Moses. <laughs> when shall I entreat for thee, and for thy servants, and for thy people, to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they remain in the river, half I again, only? All right, when do you want me? To, now, here's a stupid question, really. When do you want me to get rid of these frogs? And when I get rid of them, they're going to be in the river only. And Pharaoh said, or he said, tomorrow. Really? Why not now? Now, this is stupid. Let's say, let's say you got this itchy spot on your arm. And the capability is, all right, I can get rid of that itchy spot. When do you want to do it? Well, next week. I could do it right now. Not next week. I'll enjoy it. And I forget which preacher has a, a great message about this. One more night with the frogs. And it just, I want to get rid of these things. I want to get rid of them. When? Tomorrow. And he said, be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. All right, let's see how good you magicians. They cause more of a problem. And the frogs shall depart from thee, and from thy houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people. And they shall remain in the river only. All the Egyptians did was add more frogs. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs, which he had brought against Pharaoh. And he's praying to God. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. Now that's an interesting statement there. God is obeying Moses' word type of Christ and the frogs died out of the houses out of the villages out of the fields so they did not go back to the river God said they will stay in the river but the ones that are around right now they keeled over they croaked right there where they were they dropped dead where they were 
and they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. Let's go to 721. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. So you got dead fish, they stink. You got dead frogs, they stink. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, respite, that is relief. Oh, the frogs are gone. They're dead. Thank you, but they're dead. He, he hardened his heart. God did not harden Pharaoh's heart. Now he did. Pharaoh's is going along with the picture. And God said, okay, fine. You want to do that? All right, I'll use you to my glory. And hearken not unto them. As the Lord had said. The Lord knew it for knowledge. And the Lord said to Moses. Say unto Aaron. Stretch out thy rod. And smite the dust of the land. It may become lice throughout the land of Egypt. Alright. This God is given. G-E-B. This is their earthly God. Um, I read my note. I read my note here. Father of. I write messy. But this God runs back to. Oh, he's the father of snakes. This God here. G E B. So you run back to Apid, who is the serpent. These gods are starting to get together now. Stretch out thy stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land. This is interesting because Genesis 2, God said, man is made of the ground. Genesis 3, dust. Serpent shall eat the dust. Here's the father of the serpents, or snakes, according to the Egyptian, which is the type of the world. And we run back to AP, there's the serpent, evil. Well, isn't that quite interesting? Here is the old serpent from dust upon the head of man. That's an interesting thing, upon the head of man. Because where there is a wound upon the head of a man... There is the Antichrist. It may become lice throughout the land of Egypt. They're taking a non-living object and they're going to make a living object. As God had done with man. We were a mound of dirt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with, the, with his rod and smote the dust. Of the earth. And it became lice in man and in beasts. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. I don't know anything about lice. I don't want to know about lice. I know they got tools in, in, in the store over the counter. It's a pain in the neck, I've been told, to get rid of lice. So. And the magicians did so with their enchantment. To bring forth light. You kidding me? But they could not. The magicians of the world, the men of the world of Satan, cannot take an in an inanimate object and make light. Rot or stick is is a is a live tree. It was a live tree. Well, here we're looking at life from dirt. Satan cannot do that life from dirt that man is. So science today is messing with flesh. I mean cells and blood and not all the stuff. To me, I'm going to call it as flesh, cells. And the only way they can make new life is by cells. They cannot take dirt and make man. Make anything like God did. 
Remember, all the mammals on the land, and man himself is made from dirt. Satan cannot make an artificial man. So the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. The devil cannot produce the original creation. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And that was the big J. They walk up to Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh, we got a little hard time here. What's the problem? This is God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Every time these, these magicians show up, he does not get in with the program. And he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Now with his finger of God, the Bible records, it writes down the Ten Commandments two times. Moses broke the first. A man's hand is, set, is seen in Belshazzar's palace, writing on the plaster of the wall. Jesus bends down the ground when they, when they brought the woman caught in adultery, and he writes down something in the sand. So the magicians acknowledge that this is the original creation life. And guess what, Pharaoh? You're looking at God. But notice they don't get right and Pharaoh doesn't get right. It's God. And you'll get many people when you're in a public ministry, oh yeah, I believe in God. Do you really? Have you changed your life? Have you repented? Have these guys repented of the, of the shame and the harm they've done? No. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. There's nothing about the, this plague of lice disappearing. Now we've seen the frogs. They get swept up. They stink. But the lice stay. And the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning, type of second advent, and stand before Pharaoh. You figure Pharaoh right now, every time you see them come walking up the path, he'd be... She's quaking in his boots, wouldn't you? That's how hard he is. There are some people who are not going to get right with God as much as how much you pray and, and put effort into it. They're not going to get right. Why? Because he does not fear God. He does not fear the men of God. This is where America's going. They're going to get to the point there's just no fear at all. Lo, he cometh forth to the water. There's that main God again. Epi. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Okay, now we're going to get flies. Lord of the flies. Beelzebub. This God is Kehepri. K H E. P-R-I. He's also a representation of the dung beetle. He pictures rebirth. Rebirth. See, there's being born again in other religions. But unlike the new birth that God gives. And their rebirth is a fly god called Beelzebub. The lord of the flies. Beelzebub is the god of the devils, and he's the god of the flies. So before we continue re reading here, let's look at Luke 11.15. Luke 11.15. About Beelzebub. you got to be careful about little flying creatures. 11.15 We'll start in 14 and Watch out for birds too 
And he was casting out a devil. And it was dumb. Couldn't speak. And it came to pass when the devil was going out of the dumb spank. And the people wondered. But some of them said, He casts out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. Beelzebub is in charge of all the devils. He's also in charge of the flies. And others tempting him thought of him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts and said unto him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. Well, look at the reference. He referenced Beelzebub to Satan. And Satan to Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Before shall ye be, therefore shall they be your judges. Now watch this. But if I with the finger of God, isn't that an interesting note? Cast out devils. No doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. So we're looking at Satan. We're looking at the chief of devils. We're looking at the god of filth. We're looking at the, the, the flies. And when we come back to Exodus, now we're coming to that god. And if this is this is Satan, fly, Lord of the flies, Beelzebub, the, 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 the one that's in charge of the devils, Run us back to Ape, the serpent, the evil god, the snake. Run us to give the father of snakes, the lice. And Jesus said, as far as a man is sold that's in hell, their worm dieth not. And that's too much to take in a study, but you got to. You know, it, it, your Bible study, it looks like when a man goes into hell, he takes a body of a, of a worm, bug kind of thing. And those bugs and these characters that we're seeing right now, that flies come from maggots. This all runs together. And when we see these plagues upon the, the, the Egyptian god, they run into each other and they back up into each other. So before Pharaoh lo, he he cometh to the he cometh forth to the water. Happy. Happy, whatever. Fish, God. Jesus said. Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Don't you ever put that fish symbol as a symbol of Christianity, of Jesus Christ. That's Satan. What, are, what is the space agencies of this world looking for? Aren't they looking for water somewhere on the so they can find life? They're going back to Hapai. They're looking for that water god out there to disprove Jehovah God. Evolution is found upon water. We were supposed to be this one cell in the water, and we came walking out with legs on the sand and laid out in the beach and worshiped Baal and got a tan. And here we are now making a mess of things. So let's say, the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if thou wilt not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies. The flies will come because of that stinking mess of the fish. And that flies are going to come because of that stinking mess of the frogs. So we start seeing these plagues overlapping and causing the next one to happen. Swarms of flies. About, ever have one fly irritate you? 
it seemed like every night, almost, in our house, we'd be sitting, my, my husband and wife sitting here, you know, watching the things and doing things, and there's one pesky fly that flies by and he laughs. Oh, it can't get me. One fly will irritate you until you kill him. You're looking at swarms of flies. In charge by God. Swarms of flies upon thee, upon thy servants like the frogs. Upon thy people like the frogs. Into thy houses like the frogs. And the houses of the Egyptians like the frogs. Shall be full of the swarms of flies like the frogs. And also the ground whereon they are like the frogs. Now, flies do things that frogs don't. They regurgitate and throw up and eat and lay eggs. And turn into maggots. Well, we're going to see some diseases coming up pretty soon. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen in which my people dwell that no swarms of flies shall be there. I am going to protect the children of Israel in Goshen. There will be no flies. Now they, they had the frogs. They had the water turned to blood. Lice. But when we come to devils and Satan attacking I'm going to protect my people so these flies I don't know how God does it but they're going to attack the Egyptians and they're going to get some kind of thing well oh, that's an Israelite don't touch him now I don't know if you've ever seen the, the comic strip peanuts now, this is reverse Think about all the peanut characters. They got this film of, of, of a cloud of dust around them. I forget which one had that done. Oh, pig fat. All right, let's, let's do it in reverse. All the peanut characters have got swarms of flies around them. Yeah. So and when you got the Jew, he's not going to be touched. He's not going to be bothered. No fly shall be there. In that land, you got a group of people who are flyless, the children of Israel. Then you in the land of Egypt, you got flies. It's almost like there's going to be a wall along the border of Goshen. Because he said upon the people and the ground. But that ground of Goshen is going to be clean. The air of Goshen will have no flies. The people of Goshen, the children of Israel, will have no flies. At all. What will prevent that Jew from going in Egypt? He can't. There's a wall of flies. Now listen, not flies. I, I, I grew up with lobstermen. I forget what that bug was. There were bugs certain times of night, man. They just, there was you, masses of them. And you felt them. And that's what's going to happen. God is going to protect them. And that's for Egypt to say, well, how come they don't got this? And that's for the Jew to say, hey, that's our God protect. That's a sign. What is preventing those flies to come to us? We ain't got no bug spray. We don't have insecticide. But when you look out there, there's a wall of flies and they're not coming in. That must be our God. Mayest thou know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Those flies are going to testify God is God. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. Remember what I say? What I say? When you say signs... 1 Corinthians 1.21, that's for the Jews. That's a Jewish sign. And the Lord did so. And there came a grievous, grievous swarm of flies. Let's take Psalms 105.31. Psalms 105.31. Psalms 
Psalms 105.31. Psalms 105.31. He spanked and there came diverse sorts of fly. Not only just one type of fly, many different types of flies. Now I would think as America in America, horse flies, dragon flies, house flies, and any other kind of flies there are. They weren't just one kind. They were divers. They may have been flies that were never flies before. And lice in their coast. So Psalms tells us a little more about the fly. There are all different kinds of flies. And the Lord did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into the servants' houses, and all the land of Egypt. And the land was corrupted. Flies corrupt. When you got this many flies flying around your picnic basket, you're not going to eat that food. Now, if one fly lands on your French fry, okay, you just, you know, I'll eat it. By reason of the swarm of flies, flies corrupt. They represent Satan. The God of Beelzebub. All they do is corrupt. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron. And I gotta wonder, like I said, I mean, Moses, Aaron, they've been protected through, they have not received these plagues. So as they're walking up to Pharaoh, they're clean. And they're standing there before Pharaoh, and he's just probably covered. With flies that no movie would make. And he's got lice. I don't know if you can see lice. And said, go ye sacrifice to your God in the land. In the land. Egypt. He's come pro This is the first comprom uh, compromise that. I want you to do what I want you to do. But I want you to do it my way. Not God's way. I'll let you go, but you follow my rules and my regulations. And Moses said, it is not me so to do. No, we can't do that. We can't listen to you. We got to listen to God. For we shall sacrifice the abomination. Genesis 43, 32, 46, 34. This is the third place. Of the first three places that abomination shows up in the Bible. The abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes? And will they not stone us? The Egyptians do not like the Hebrew people. The Egyptians don't like the Hebrew shepherd. And they don't like the sacrifice of those that serve God. And if you do serve God, we're going to stone you. Now you're playing into the book of Acts. Where they whipped the disciples and apostles for serving God and doing right. They would love to kill them. But they feared the people. So we can't serve God in your land. You'll kill us. We will go three days journey into the wilderness. And sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us, not you commanding us. God don't say him. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go. That you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. I'll let you go in the wilderness, but you're not going three days. You're going to stay close. And this is where the trouble, where the, where the church gets too close to the world and gets too close to the government. 
where they tell you what you can do and what you can't do. To be separated from the Egyptian world. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, from his people, tomorrow. <laughs> Notice how he throws that back at him. Not now. We'll do it tomorrow. You remember the frogs? <laughs> but let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice the Lord. Moses is getting the point now. You're not listening. I don't believe you. And, the Moses, and Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. Again. You don't find anybody like that where God, like Moses. And he removed, God removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh and from the servants and from his people. And there remained not one. Now we don't know what happened to those flies. We, the frogs died. And God said, All right, they're going to stay in the river only. What happened to these flies? I don't know. They flew off? They died or what? And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Man, when is this guy ever going to learn? He's not. He's not even afraid when Moses and Aaron comes up to him. Like, uh-oh, here we go. And we're seeing the gods being attacked by the God. And we got more to go.